Hey, what up, America? <laughs> it's your boy, Bouchon Glover, Better Black America TV, YouTube. Hey, what up, America? It's your boy, Bouchon Glover, Better Black America TV on YouTube. And you have just tuned in to A Better Black America This Week. Now, the Better Black America This Week is pretty much the the, the news cycles when it comes to politics, when it comes to uh, what will relate to black America. And politics is a hot topic right now. And Kanye West is another hot topic as well because a large volume of black people, and I'm not talking about niggers, a large volume of black people are God-fearing Christians. And to see what uh, Kanye West did uh, with his album release, uh, he re had an album release party, an uh, album release party, here in um, L.A. at the uh, Fabulous Forum. And I happened to be driving by the Forum uh, Wednesday night, and I saw Jesus is King. And I stopped on Manchester, put my hat on, and took a picture because I never thought I would see the Fabulous Forum lit up and it says Jesus is King. Now, a lot of people don't really understand what's going on with, with uh, Kanye West, but we are talking about a free Negro. And a lot of us are understanding that it's time for us to be free as well. And it's OK for us to talk about and have the dialogue and have the the, the cures and the treatments that has been delayed but not denied when it comes to recovery in black America. So we're dawning on the reconstruction era for black America. And a lot of people really don't understand. So I have to take I'm taking the time out today. Uh, for a better black America this week to start to uh, give you some information so you can make a decision because during the think tanks uh, that we've been having behind closed doors nationally and it's a united front that black America not niggers but black Americans are considering uh, blacking out in 2020 meaning blackout 2020 meaning we won't vote for neither party and when the Democrats say you know no vote for the Democratic Party is a is a vote for Trump not necessarily OK, because we'll vote on, on our local elections, but we're going to vote for ourselves. So we'll actually do some write ins. And if you don't want to write your name in, write my name in because I'm running for president for 2020 as well. So vote for me. I'm not third party. I'm probably a 10th party. <laughs> but at the end of the day, we can't just sit back and just allow uh, the fabric of black America to be erased. So number one, we got to get back to being black. That gives us power. That gives us uh connects us to every melanated person on this planet, which gives us a global power because we have been uh, downgraded to an ethnicity. And that was orchestrated by Lyndon B. Johnson when he checkmated black America during the 60s, during the civil rights movement. Now, I've been asking a lot of people now, who are you voting for? And they draw a blank. I asked them straight out, who are you voting for? I haven't uh, been privy to being the company of Trump supporters because I know who they they're voting for. But when it comes to black Americans and Latinos, you know, I, I talk to them on a daily basis. And my question is, who are you voting for? And everyone draws a blank. But for black America, we might have to show our muscle. We might have to show our voting power and actually black out, meaning we're not voting for anyone because we don't want to be guilty by association. Now that we've got our freedoms and our liberties, our true freedom and our true liberty this year of August 20th, the 400 year curse has passed. Now we can actually be truth tellers because they didn't want us to read. They didn't want us to write. They didn't want us to be educated because they knew that our spirit inside of us will motivate us to share this information like I'm sharing with you today. Now, the truth about the Democratic Party. Now, I wanted to focus on that, the truth about the Democratic Party, because if you knew the roots and the essence of the Democratic Party, then therefore it would be hard for you to support a party that still supports your oppression, that still supports your uh, mass incarceration, which is slavery when it comes to the federal prisons, because federal prisons, you know, they make goods and services and they get paid five, six, ten cents to the dollar and everything else goes to restitution, which is profit for the investors. Now, don't take my word for it. Now, all you got to do is look up Tom Strayer. Tom Strayer, who was actually in the last Democratic debate, he's a um, philanthropist and he's running for president, but he got his riches and his wealth and was able to retire a billionaire by investing in private prisons and private uh, private prison corporations. 
Now, we got a Democratic president that pretty much capitalized off of modern day slavery because in that 13th Amendment, if you're criminalized, you're not free. The 13th Amendment freed the slaves. But if you commit a crime, you're back into slavery. And that's what rebuilt the South. And that's where the, the images of the chain gang and all of that came from. That was us rebuilding the South post-Civil War. So now that we're dawning on 2019 and we have to go into 2020 with clear vision, we, we're going to have to take a stance in the United Front. And I'm going to have to tell you, black folk, I'm not talking to niggers. I'm talking about black folk. Black folk, your gender, meaning you're a woman, is irrelevant to the black race. Your sexual preference, if you're a black man, it's irrelevant to the black race because at the end of the day, you are still a black man. So we cannot support your movements or anything uh, to this point because you got everything that you asked for, okay? Gay people, LBGTQ community, people have the same rights and civil li liberties as any human being on this planet, especially in this nation. So therefore, if you're discriminated upon, sue, just like a woman, I'm fighting for equal pay. It's a law, sisters. The Civil Rights Act of 1964, and Barack Obama looked it up, doubled down on the Lily Ledbetter Act. Lily Ledbetter defeated uh, Firestone because she was an executive and she wasn't getting paid the same rates as her um, as her male co-workers. So therefore, she won her case. So sue, because there's nothing on the books. There's no laws that's trying to change. That's why the Democratic Party is in shambles right now, because they're trying to impeach a president that was a regular wealthy citizen that now has access to all their secrets. Because when you find uh, uh, the Trump administration talking with Ukraine, you actually see the trail of Joe Biden and his son in the bed with Ukraine. OK, because this president has declassified a lot of information that. I've been privy to, and you can actually go online and look at yourself. Go to the CIA.gov, FBI.gov. The, pres the president of the United States has declassified a lot of information. So therefore, he's giving the information to the people that the Democratic Party don't want us to have. And to the Democratic Party, we are no longer your Negroes. We are no longer your basket of deplorables. OK, now you can still have the niggers. But you can't have black folk because black folk, we are waking up day by day because we know without a shadow of a doubt, it's time for us to um, go after our portion of the American pie, of the American dream, and to bridge the wealth gaps. Now, if we support a Democrat like Bernie Sanders, Bernie Sanders is a socialist. So any generational wealth that you're trying to build or anything that you want to pass down to your children's children will be knocked out the box. And one thing during the last debate that I heard, which basically pissed me off, OK, is when Joe Biden said he made him he, he, he misspoke and said he will um, eliminate ta uh, capital gains. But then he doubled down and said he will raise capital gains. See, when you're thinking about raising capital gains, you're only thinking about the rich and the wealthy people that's on the top that don't even. Uh, um, pursue an income. That's why they could say $1 because they don't work. Their money works for them. But what about the working class person that's trying to bridge the wealth gap, investing in properties, flipping properties, and pretty much don't want to split half of his profits because those profits will be more beneficiary to the working class person other than. See, that's why we have to talk about both sides. See, the Democratic Party only gives you one side because the liberal media is owned by Jews who change their last names to assimilate themselves as white Americans. But they don't like the president. They can't stand the president. So therefore, this is why they publicly lynch him every night. And as a black man, I can say that now Joe Biden said that what they were doing to Bill Clinton was a public lynching. And then when you ask Joe Biden about it today, I apologize. OK, it doesn't matter if you apologize, because what's going on today with the president of the United States is that he is being publicly lynched every night. And when I say publicly lynching, which party is, is truly and I'm going to say truly associated with lynching? OK, now we know that that there was lynchings all over this country. But where was it legal? It was legal in the Confederate Democratic South, along with uh, segregation, along with them fighting against civil rights. 
George Wallace was the, the governor of Louisiana, and he was the one that was blocking you from going to their schools, blocking our baby boomers from going to the same schools as whites in the 60s. He's the one that's on record and said, segregation now, segregation forever. Them coon spades, niggas. That, that's, that's George Wallace. Okay. The University of Alabama did not recruit black players until after 1970 when the USC Trojans with Sam Bam Cunningham went and destroyed them on the road. I was born in 71. So baby boomers and Generation X, we, we have to really frame the next generation so they can actually see. And we have to go, we're going to have to educate them. Because when I talk to um, Americans and I look up the, the Glover family, in fact, over 1,300 Glovers fought in the Civil War. That was fighting for their freedom and their liberties. Okay, the Democratic Party defended slavery because they wanted free labor. So blacks, the former slaves, what we did was we preserved capitalism, meaning we preserved it to the point where we can capitalize off of it. The Democratic Party fought to keep blacks as slaves because they had free labor. If you was in New York, you was in Chicago, you had to pay your laborers. OK, but now how can we compete? And when it comes to competition, when the cotton is being picked for free, the oranges, everything down south is being picked. For free, free labor, there's no competition. So therefore, the Democratic Party decides to separate from America and, and have a, what we call the Civil War fought and lost. But not so fast because we were their property and they do not want us to pass them because they know without a shadow of a doubt, if the black race got the same opportunities as the white race in America, we would have superseded them 10 times over. But right now, time is up because they can't stop us. Because we know what I shall doubt, Black Wall Street, okay, they shut Black Wall Street down, which was the suburbs, uh, the Greenwood, Oklahoma, the suburbs of Tulsa, Oklahoma, where blacks were thriving and flourishing. And, you know, America aided and abetted with, the, with bombing that town because blacks were advancing. Now, look at uh, Ronald Reagan. When Ronald Reagan became president, there was affirmative actions. And those affirmative actions was bridging the gap when it comes to social and economic gap in black America much faster than regular whites or poor whites. So therefore, they lobbied um, President Reagan to actually uh, do away with the affirmative actions. He basically decided to say no. But guess what? After they attempted to assassinate him and shot him and shot his, his Secret Service, which was Brady, which became the Brady Bill. Reagan went on and said, you know what? I will not only remove these affirmative actions, I will do the Iran-Contra, bring drugs and crack and, and cocaine into communities of color and basically destroy them and then tell my wife to tell them just to say no. But at the end of the day, it just prolonged it. So Democrats and Republicans, you know, they, they're, they're on the same side, but as black Americans, you know, we're going to have to stand as a sovereign group of people that have independence and allow both parties to fight for our vote from a collective perspective. Now, we know what I shall doubt. The Democrats pretty much abandoned us. You know, they're, they're after identity politics, women's lives, women's movement, gay rights, immigrants, the whole nine. But the Republican Party basically saying, Black America, what do you have to lose? Now, we're not registering as Republicans. But when you get behind that ballot box, you know, you don't want to be guilty by association. So if you can't just vote for Trump, vote for yourself because black America is going to preserve capitalism once again. And it's going to preserve America, which is a republic, because I believe James Madison or J uh, Thomas Jefferson said America is a republic if we could keep it that way. And it's clear that the Democratic Party is in the opposition of America. So moving forward on a better black America this week. Each week, we're going to just start breaking it down and letting you know about the Democratic Party because the Democratic Party is pretty much anti-American. The Democratic Party defended slavery, started the Civil War, opposed Reconstruction, founded the KKK, imposed segregation, uh, had public lynchings, and fought against civil rights. That's the Democratic Party. We're going to break it down layer by layer. So each week, we're going to capitalize on it. So next week, our next A Better Black America this week is going to be talking about how the Democratic Party defended slavery. We're going to keep it 100 with you because the truth shall make us free. And just by merely telling the truth, just by merely telling the truth, it's pretty much uh, revolutionary during times of deceit. And with that being said, man, happy Saturday to you. Today is November 2nd, Saturday morning. 
With that being said, have a great day, a better black America. And black stands for black, Latin, Asian, Caucasian, kinsman, but the black man gonna drive this train. And with that being said, have a great day. Peace out. Happy Saturday to you. Happy Saturday.